The number one enemy of Elden Ring is not the Elden Beast, Radagon, or even the Lobsters. No, it's Patches. This bald boy took stance damage away from Flame of the Red Mains. It took the status buildup from dual-wielded daggers. He poisoned our water supply, burned our crops, and delivered a plague onto our houses. And he's been doing it since before the days of Demon's Holes, first appearing in Armored Core 4. So before Armored Core 6 comes out, let's weaponize his scumbag style in Elden Ring with a new secret starting class. To watch these runs live follow me on twitch we're finding new ways to play elden ring all the time like the video and subscribe this is free content you can support me for free by doing that no need to be a greedy gus if you want you could give me money on patreon it's the best place to do it and there's a few extra videos that are about kind of niche characters it would be nice but you don't really need to We'll start as a samurai since its stats are pretty close to what we need for patches right away. And normally I just skip character customization, but I do one thing real quick. Cowabunga, grab the crafting kit in Limgrave, pick up a horse, and I decided to take the whetstone knife. I was of two minds on changing the Ash of War on our spear later. Part of me says, Patches drops the spear with one Ash of War. You should use the specific Ash of War the whole time. Another part of me says, Patches is a cheeky bastard who would steal things from corpses and use the silliest and safest tools to stay alive. I put it up to a vote in the chat. They decided it's more in the spirit of Patches to cheese things. Don't worry, I only end up using it for one boss. Can you guess which one? Anyway, strength tier, save Alexander from the hole, although killing someone stuck in a hole and looting them is much more patches. So yeah, Pot Lad dies early today. I'm not gonna start killing him early in future runs. This is just a patches RP experience. I truly believe the 5% boost Alexander's shard has over the standard jar shard is worth the wait till for Amazula, but today, we're role-playing. Nerd Juice is blocking what we need from Patches, so unfortunately we have to kill Patches' boyfriend. I assume they're dating. Why else would this dude be gatekeeping Patches' cave so hard? Horizontal slashes are always good against NPCs, but waiting for Yura is much more efficient and much more cheeky and scumbaggy. But inside Murkwater Cave, there's an imposter fool Patches. Well, I am a fool fighter, so bring on the pretender. He has a big old shield, but shields don't protect against status effects, and he is surrendering in 10 seconds. No surrender. This coward has been sullying our reputation for too long. Patches is brave, and now Patches is me. He drops his whole armor set and a plus seven spear. No shield yet. For some reason, we couldn't pick that up from his corpse. I go to church, unfortunately, there's no clerics here. Bummer. There's a physic flask, though, and we'll get the better ones, like charged attack and stamina regen from the Mistwood Ruins. Now imagine, Patches in Fort Height. There we grab the Dactus Medallion Part 1 before heading to the Dragon Barrel. Forgot to grab the pickle. Can you imagine if we went to the Dragon Barrel without a pickle? On the way to bamboozle the Knight's Cavalry, he just, uh, disappears because it's morning. Wait, is that a Sleepy Hollow reference? Oh god, there are even pumpkin heads in this game. Washington Irving fandom, shout out in the comments. I have to reset the grace anyway, so I go back to Kale's place and throw hands at Ronnie. This is for making me do your whole quest every time I want to do all remembrances. All right, now let's fight a boss with some real patches style. Getting next to a ledge and just kind of pushing. Doesn't work the first few times, this dude loves his little notch. Third time's the charm, that's our only real rune grind here. We could kill the sleepy dragon, but that sounds mean and ill-sporting. It's much funnier to trick people into falling into holes. Being a greedy Gus, it's time for an early run through the abandoned cave. Our spear is automatically a plus seven, and it has impaling thrust, which pierces through guards. The silly spear knight tries to block with her spears. Come on, that's not a tower shield. Even though she's free, her fellow knight is a bit more of an honest fight. All it takes is a bit of patience, then we get the golden scarab talisman so we can get stinking over level later. That was pretty smooth, and Margit is generally easier. He also summons weird light weapons, but we have the power of thrusting. I don't want to say this spear has good reach since this is actually the second shortest spear, behind only the aptly named short spear. But compared to something like a straight sword, it's nice. Impaling thrust specifically lets us lunge forward like we're making a charged attack, but with more speed. Oh, and the charged attack on the spear makes you run forward. Hate that. That's good stance pressure and leads to an easy win. Gostok is trying to lock people in rooms to die so he can steal their runes. Cease and desist. 
That's copyright infringement. I'm okay with murder and theft, but I draw the line at a disrespect of IP rights. The real reason I'm not killing the Sleepy Dragon is because getting a Bleed Ash of War for the Spear is going to take a while. So instead, let's just fight a putrid avatar straight up that's scaled for the end game. What could go wrong? That's not ironic foreshadowing. He literally shits the bed because he can't stop pooping. He goes for Elden Stars Jr. once, but as long as I can hop on the horse, we can live through it fine. Kill the tree and get more runes than the sleepy dragon would have given us in half the time. Raw talent. While we're in the neighborhood, let's go into Fort Faroth, which implies the existence of Fort Neroth and Fort Wherever You Are Oath. That's for the Dectus Medallion too, and Radigan's Source Seal in case I want to sell it. A lot of effort for this thing, I had to stance break a rat to escape, and I forgot to sell it, so whoops. Learning a time, Warpy to the bridge, jump off the bridge, grab the key, and you know what? Hey, let's fight Smarag. Our weapon is fine. It adds another boss to the tally and gives us an amount of runes that's still useful at this level. The spear is okay at hitting the head, but I'm really starting to notice the mediocre length. Like, if you can get good at using it, it will be satisfying. That's the most important part of any weapon, but it lacks the girth of something like a great hammer and the safety of something like the pike. It ends up being kind of fine just fine anyway warp to bellum highway drop into raya lucaria for the smithing stone threes we need for the bell bearing that we don't really need maybe if we want to upgrade the shield later the crystallion is a joke after its armor breaks the whole thing just kind of falls apart then we ride up to altus to activate the radon fight and come back down to limgrave to buy the impaling thrust extra warp from bernie might seem weird to buy it from him when like it's already on the spear but if we get this one from bernie we can change the weapon infusion to heavy or quality or something like that for more information Google Bernie gives patches quality heavy thrusts on your work computer. Now we're ready to break the cannon, and I'm about to figure out why things usually shake out in a specific way. Why are you running? Why are you running? It's time for the Radon fight, and if I'm gonna do this, I wanna do it like Patches would. So I back up to start the melee phase. Did you know that if you back up at the start of the Radon fight, you activate the melee phase early? Did you know that the Royal Revenants take damage from healing spells? Did you know? Shut up, nerd! Specifically, I'm trying to take him to the edge of the arena. That way, when he activates phase two, he just crashes into the cliff and dies. I died trying to do that. The cheese is worse than just fighting him. I died twice trying to do it. Eventually, we get him to the part where he activates his crag blade, and I tend not to stay in this section of the fight. Apparently, a bunch of his gravity moves I thought were phase two specific actually start here. It's really surprising when I try to take him to the beach, beach, and he goes for the wave. Oh, by the way, way, the cheese doesn't work, or it didn't, and go Going for it was annoying. I guess they patched it. Patches is at it again. We died one more time, but it's better to just fight him the normal way. Right up, ignoring the arrows, and stab him. Then run when other people hit him. Radon dead. And now there's a big hole in the world, which opens up the enemy we can farm our shield from. But there's a way we can make farming faster, and it starts in Raya Lucaria. First, we have to fight the big red dog. Super Giant is too cowardly to let you fight the big red dog in Hades, but FromSoft do what Super Giant don't. To be fair, they don't let you fight the dog for long. It dies really fast. Classic patches fight against Moongrim. We break his shield, then climb up the elevator so he'll chase us and fall down a big hole. Renala is the key to proper farming, but she's not going to let us respec. I don't know why she's mad at us. Just because we killed her son and her dog? What a baby. It's a two cycle for phase one, and then I fudged up phase two two and took the moon when you take the moon you take more damage from her magic attacks later and that's what kills us attempt two it's actually good we don't have enough damage from our spear to one shot the kids since it keeps them alive to be the golden child literally the golden child the one that glows gold the metaphorical golden child is ronnie she's the only one ranala likes phase two we don't get hit by the moon and believe it or not things go better when a celestial body doesn't shatter your skeleton into sand ranala gives up and now we can respec when we have a larval tier there's one in Radon's hole, and we can actually do a round of farming on the way. We have to kill these little dudes with the shield. It's the same shield the boys use in all our no vigor runs. Arcane's coming next week. It's a 2% drop chance with our base item discovery, so that's why we take the larval tier to the moon mother and get 60 arcane. Paired with a silver pickle, that becomes a 4.1% drop chance, or about 1 in 50 to 1 in 25. Let's a go, accounting with Pokemon. After we hit number 20, Raticate, we die for the first time. Yeah, so since we don't have a uh, Vigor, there are two archers shooting frostbite arrows, a sword fighter with combos, and oh, the three dudes were actually fighting for the shield, so it's pretty easy to get ganked. That means we have to go back to Lernia for more silver 
pickles, it's a brief detour. Good news and bad news. We only die one more time, that's the good news. Bad news, we die at number 62, Polyrath, which you might notice is worse than 1 in 25. It's also worse than 1 in 50 if we had no arcane investment and no silver pickles. Statistically, pretty bad, and uh, we still don't have it. Happens on Doduo, that's number 84, and that's pretty, pretty terrible. We're rolling for what is basically a critical hit in Dungeons and Dragons and didn't get one until we rolled 84 times. If I was a superstitious man, I would burn this disc. Thankfully, I'm not. I know luck has nothing to do with my rolls. That's the work of God. Let's go kill God. Infiltrates. First, we have to go back to our quality build. So we need more larval tears. You can get an easy one from the Mimic, which we cheese even harder than normal. It's like looking in a mirror, only not. By leaving our shield on that we don't have the strength to carry, we can easily break its guard constantly and crit it. Now, I didn't have to make the Mimic fight easier, but I could, so I did. Now we can respec with Renala again and get enough strength to properly carry this shield. Oh, and uh, Gilka died. Since we have enough pockets for the Ritual Sword Talisman, RIP Gilka, keep uh, Gilkin in hell. Up the danger path of Stormvale, we're dodging because shields don't work with the Ballista. It pushes you back as it shoots you. Maybe it'll be better against Godric. I mean, it's fine. When he hits the shield, we can guard counter for more damage and big stance pressure, but here's the thing. Shields suck, at least against bosses. They're maybe even worse than spells. In the days of Dark Souls, even through Dark Souls 3, most bosses were slow enough that between their attacks, you could bring your shield up and put it down to manage your stamina drain. But the Elden Ring bosses don't stop attacking you until they've hit a super sexy style combo. Best case scenario, you're down almost all of your stamina but can get off one nice counter hit. The more common scenario, your guard breaks and you get hit for your trouble. So just dodge, better 90% of the time. I'll try to use the shield when I can, but it's just not as good. Thankfully, Godric is kind of a joke, so we can finish him off anyway. A seemingly random errand here to the village of the Auburn Eriks. We'll duke it out with a perfumer, then kill a helpless old man for the Hallig Tree Medallion Part 1, something we're going to need later for all remembrances. But I'm really here for another larval tier. After that errand, we go into the sealed tunnel for the Bell Bearing 2. Don't know why I didn't grab this before Radon, or even before the Putrid Avatar, but better late than ever. Oh hey, Ensha. Um, bye Ensha. Let's level our spear up. All of this was to farm birds easier for golden pickles, and it still goes terribly. The odds of a foot drop should be like one in three. We get it on more like one in eight, and we need a lot of feet, so it should at least average out, but no. Twice, instead of rolling over the tiny rock, we backstepped off the cliff instead. So we died twice just killing small birds. And then I forgot to respec when we fought Grail, so, you know, I died there too. After fixing it up, we had to fight Grail, and god, this guy loves janking. Today he decided the bridge should be on the x-axis instead of the y-axis. His whole moveset is designed to guide him down the bridge like a bowling ball, but instead he just acts like an absolute freak and puts himself perpendicular to his purposeful path. It makes the head go in a weird place and tricky to get a handle on that wriggly head so that we can come up with a win. Those runes will level us up, but also allow us to pick up a few rune arcs and a perfume bottle on the way to the tree sentinel. This was before I googled and saw everything I would need to make the acid perfume that Patches uses, and like, uh... Nope. Don't worry, if you're mad about that, I fell off a cliff and got mad about that. Tree Sentinel time, the hammer has lightning damage, so that would chip through our physical shield and have too much stamina pressure. So we're just gonna dodge and stab. Patience and knowledge of the fight pay off, and it just kind of works. We'll be using the shield again against the Godfrey Shade. He does pure physical damage. It's gonna be great. So let's level it up and even get the Great Shield Talisman, which will give us a plus 10 to the guard boost. But Phil, the Great Shield Talisman is better on medium shields because guard boost hits a point of diminishing returns. What's the dominion of the world? Tell me about Radon again. Erd Tree Avatar goes fine. Elden Stars Jr. without a horse. It's annoying, but overall, okay. Here's where shields actually work great. Basic enemies, like the Grave Warden Duelist. I mean, the Duelists are extra as hell. They are not basic, but they don't have the insane combos bosses do, and will give you enough time to reset your stamina. They also bounce off your shield, stopping the combo. And they don't have any elemental damage to chip around your shield. Speaking of shields, we grab the Ritual Shield Talisman for 30% more defense
defense at full health, and then get hit in the back by a gargoyle because I wasn't paying attention. All right, the Godfrey Shade should be free with the Tower Shield. It's 100% physical damage, but it's all about stamina pressure. He doesn't stop attacking, and if you try and wiggle in a counter, you get hit. If you wait for his combos to end, your shield breaks. Maybe I could invest in more endurance, but you know what uses less endurance than blocking and gives you a better opening to punish? Dodge! Dodge is also cool because it doesn't weigh 500 goddamn pounds. I want to clarify, there's nothing wrong with a shield playstyle. I just think it needs a tremendous buff to be useful since aggressiveness of the bosses has consistently increased since Demon's Holes. After switching to dodging, we get the win. First try. Brief detour to Stormvale for a more quality weapon. We need 30 strength for a shield. That's bad. And the spear normally scales better with dexterity, so quality is the way to go. Despite quality being pretty bad. Wow, someone could lock us in a room with this wind knight. That would be so dangerous. We grab the guard counter talisman and go upstairs. A few bombo birds, then bingo bongo bombo. We open the fog gate for the iron wet blade. Godric's great rune is nearby. Might as well turn it on even if we don't fully activate it just yet. Final roadblock to Morgoth is the black knife assassin. We can actually just run around, but I want to use the shield as many places as I can. Look at that. We can block daggers. Ooh. Morgoth is every problem the shield could have. Too many attacks. Some of them are lasers that chip through since they're not physical damage. And in phase two, bleed. And shit on the floor that ignores the shield. It's just pretty bad. Attempt two, we go for dodges, but like... Morgoth's just kind of hard sometimes. We're fighting him longer with the quality spear, which it's time to admit is not a quality weapon. Think about it. It's just called a spear. At least the swords get called like knight's sword or something. There's no descriptor to this. It's literally just spear. Okay, let's try it with Melina. Patches would exploit someone else's help. She does help for sure and gets us into phase two, but then she dies and we're alone in phase two when Morgoth has more health. Doesn't really do great. So next time we go without Melina, and that's the strategy specifically doing it with melina and then doing it without her it just feels like we're doing a lot more damage when he has less health than the more health we gave him by summoning him specifically it's purely psychological but you gotta win the game in your head first and with morgoth dead we can go to the earth tree find the god who made our farm drop so bad and wait it's closed today if only there was a political party we could join dedicated to burning this thing down we run through the four Biden lands. Remember, the best way to stop crime is to eliminate poverty. Nobody likes breaking the law. It's done out of desperation. Mountaintops of the Giants and a bell bearing three. Then we go on a little upgrading spree to get our spear more speary. We're ready for the fire giant and we start thrusting on the toes. Our shield doesn't stop his shield from doming our chrome or fire from torching us, so we'll just roll. He also rolls. We made it to phase two on the first try and start thrusting between the thighs instead. Sometimes we get a little thrust in the hands and even on the soles of his feet. It's a pretty great finish on our first try with a nice variety of places to thrust. The tree is on fire, but there's no explanation to why we have to go to Faramazula in the game. Actually, Phil, the root of death that Malakath has is... Shut it. Bernie and I take on the Godskin duo together. It's the Volcano Manor boys, and it goes great. The shield works really well against the Slender Man. Almost all of his attacks are physical, especially in phase one. There's the Black Fireball, but it has so much wind up, we can easily roll out of the way. Chunky brings the skinny back, but we're just really, really good at handling it. Mercifully, the Apostle doesn't have endless combos like Godfrey, at least in phase one. Presumably because you're meant to be ganked to high heaven by these two jabronis. First try win. Come back for stream two and we're leveling up everything. Shield, spear, if we could upgrade the leather set, we would. Oh, I guess that's Raptor's Black Feathers. Never mind, we won't. Swag jump goes great. Bird run doesn't because I fell off the cliff. Whoops. The Draconic Spree Sentinel is pretty free. Some of his hitbox feel a little trolly, but I'm an expert at dodging them. We had a bit of a sour patch against this guy lately. It's nice to feel like we won the war head. Those runes max out the really great shield. Hey, whatever happened to that Bernie guy? Raya might know. She's our sister from a snaky mister and some jackass merchant stole from her. I'm so upset. That's my thing. Yeah, we thrust Boggart. Patches really just be thrusting everyone left and right. Bring that necklace back to Raya, then talk to Renaltus and head to Volcano Manor. This Tanith lady has everything we're looking for. A key to her bedroom, end of list. Then we crank the shortcut and find another Godskin Noble. It's like the Godskin duo, but easier. And also, Bernie isn't here. You know, it would be cool if you could finish the Bernie quest through the royal capital and summon him here or maybe against Rikard or whatever. He's just a cool buff. 
buddy, and it sucks that he can only help out in the random godskin duo fight that is randomly mandatory for some reason. We're mainly here for a permanent partner from Volcano Manor, and there's no Bernie Ashes, but there are Raya Ashes. Um, okay. The reason we're going for the Man Serpent Ashes, they have the Flame Whip that Patches normally gives you on his quest. From the description, Spirit of Deformed Man Serpent that wields a whip of magma. It is said that long ago, the Elder Serpent that dwelled on Mount Gelmnir devoured a demigod, and the birth of the Man Serpents followed. There isn't really anything about the spear or shield that gives you any lore information, or the leather set. They kind of just say, this is a spear, this is a shield, this is America, look how I'm living now. On the way to the Wind Scam Catacombs, we take on Eleonora. No issues here. She tries to hit us with some dragon breath, but why don't you try dragging this spear across your face? <laughs> Am I right? Wind Scam Catacombs are only a little bit annoying. Impaling Thrust is good against anyone with a shield. Erd Tree Burial Watchdog, hey, why don't you stay buried? Because watch this, dog. I erd you like trees. We kill it. That means we can go by Grave Warts 1 through 3, and already grabbed the 4 and 5 earlier in the catacombs. Gelmnir Hero's Grave has the 6s and 7s we need, so Raya gets leveled up there, and finally we go to the Giant Conquering Hero's Grave. Shielding it up helps with this Fire Monk in a tight space. Like I said, shield, good against basic enemies, just not bosses. That's how we get Raya up to plus 10. Let's go show how strong she is. She's got three things that make her great. Number one, her whip makes magma on the ground and constantly chips away at boss's health. Number two, she's stinky aggressive. We're in phase two with a crit and she just goes right in the paint and starts making some paint. Magma paint. What's number three? She's a nice lady. It doesn't help us beat bosses, but if Patches is going to win the heart of Tanith, he's going to need her half-daughter's help. Oh, also, phase two of Malakath is way easier than phase one. Corp to the Ashen Capital and it's time for Gideon. I think the spear should let us just poise chain him stepping forward and pressing R1, but he breaks the chain. Does he not listen to Fleetwood Mac? Stevie Nicks made it clear you do not do that. I was gonna let him live, but frankly, disrespecting the Mac is something I can't tolerate. Godfrey is about to throw down, but we have a shield, so hope you're ready to die. I wasn't talking to Godfrey, I was talking to my stamina bar. Good God. If only there was a talisman to increase our guard boost. Oh well, guess not. Death one. Attempt two, we just dodge, and it's better. Not all the way better, because we got stomped, and that didn't feel nice. Bailing thrust is good here, getting us to phase two, but it's not really enough. The damage is falling off, and each of our hits is worth such a small percentage of one of his hits. Time is the biggest killer in Elden Ring. If you're fighting a boss longer, you can mess up, get flurried down by this dude in phase two, and die. Eventually, we just get around him, pokey pokey the man, and don't have to catch those hands. Finally made it to Radagon, and this goes pretty bad. I've noticed I always have to get the download against Radagon at least once to remember how the rhythm goes. Raya is doing a lot of work this fight with a whip that makes fire and splatoons up the floor with more fire. Unfortunately, Radagon is also dealing a lot of damage, and Raya isn't very much of a tank. To be honest, she's not much of a fighter in general. She's just a noodle doing her best, and we love her for that. We get to the Elden Beast with no flasks left and less than full HP, so I might as well swap out these ritual talismans for the, uh, I don't know, crit talisman? Sure. I'm hot swapping, I just kind of picked one. But fighting the Elden Beast without a single heal, it's kind of hard. The key to Radagon is to hit him more than he hits you. A crazy strategy, I know, but we get sick dodges, jumps, and punishes. Hey, Raya is even alive for the Elden Beast, and it is not going for the first set of rings. Like, ever. It just keeps doing the melee attack, so we get to punish them until they're at less than 15% HP, then it rings, and immediately Elden Stars, of course, because it's like almost dead, and triple rings. Too late, dork. We take down the Yard Tree, so that should be a nice gift for Tanith. Although, another god could end up taking their place, so let's go take on everybody else. Start by thrusting into the castle's hole, then heading into the Nile fight. Shield is good here. The two banished knights bonk off our big shield so we can guard counter them down. Then stay back, Pope, space it right to not die. Hey, we already have the other half of the Halig Tree Medallion, so we can go right to the Consecrated Snowfield and fall off a cliff, then fall off the cliff uh, again. The Putrid Avatar is hitless though, that's pretty sick. It gives us the thorny tier to make combos do more damage and a buttload of runes. The bigger the butt, the bigger the load, and dragons have big old butts. In Patch's fashion, we bring some cheese with the calamari and a couple of octopus nearby. Phil, squitted octopus are different and how many times do we have to do this? They help, but honestly we do most of the work just thrusting into that dragon's large backside for a dragon buttload of runes. Back to progress, liturgical town goes okay. First archer and second archer aren't issues, but we do get grabbed by the invisible black knife assassin. Should have seen that coming. Halig tree time, swag jump, fight Loretta, and let's talk about the great lore on the spear. 
From the description, weapon compromised of a blade attached to a long haft. A far-reaching piercing weapon. It can be wielded from behind the safety of a raised shield. Very effective against mounted foes. Damn, someone at FromSoft must have played Civ. By the by, FromSoft, you want to make a real-time strategy game with the different factions of the Shattering War? Free idea. Just, uh, you know, maybe give me a copy. A little kiss on the forehead so I know I'm your favorite boy. Spear wins against Loretta, though. Not ready for Melania just yet. Let's go make more money first. The best way to Mogwin Palace is to fight Nerd Juice. I don't want to do that. He's one of our many boyfriends. Wait, this isn't Nerd Juice. It's his cousin, the Penguin Noble. So it's totally fine. We can thrust him in a different way than we thrust his cousin. Mogwin time. The Sanguine Noble is taller than the Penguin one, but we can finish them off and buy a few more rune arts, just in case we die a lot to the last boss or something. We have the Moog tier, and for once we actually remember to use it, so that's nice. Raya might not seem that useful against Moog since he has so much fire resistance, but you know who else has huge fire resistance? Raya. So all that blood and fire just lets her kind of tank through it. And our spear can get him pretty dang low before he goes to phase two and gets to heal back up to half anyway. Good old fireproof and massively aggressive Raya is going in to take the aggro, and we can come in and continue to get damage while he's distracted. Moog dead. Blood god gone. Placidious Axe is an old god, and you can get to him pretty fast. It's annoying, since you have to drop down every time you fight him. He's weakest to piercing damage, though, since that's what the spear does. Should go fine. Balance of the universe, though. If we remember to put the Moog tier on for Moog, we'll forget to take it off for the next boss. And he teleports early, so it's gonna be a long fight. We don't have any flasks left, and he starts going for the Omega Laser, so I just quit out. That means we technically didn't lose, and when we try again with the combo tier and stance pressure tier, it's officially our first time, technically. It's much better. We do a ton of damage and break him down with a combo on his face, one of his two faces, which takes way more damage, and he's at 8%-ish health before the Omega Laser. Just gotta tank it, and we win with a few pokes. Is the Regal Cinema Spirit a god of something? It's the god of the blue Splatoon team, I guess. Raya is captain of the red team, so we're really just helping Raya win a Splatoon match. It's nice to help your sister sometimes. Impaling Thrust won't hit the moose's tummy at first, but it turns out we just need to hit him from the side. Valiant Gargoyles are nearby, might as well do them next. They love to use poison, but I've learned that getting poisoned is bad, and our damage isn't good, but it's good enough to make this easy. I'm not gonna die to the gargoyles, okay? I'm gonna die falling off the roots and the deep root depths like a patriot. Fia champs also go fine, but we're not one-shotting them and that feels weird. I don't want to do the whole Fia quest right now to fight Fortis Axe or the Ronnie quest to do the Fia quest to fight Fortis Axe. So instead, let's just get in a coffin and fall down a waterfall. To get where we're going, you can either fight two gargoyles and do a jackass stunt, go to the sewer and fight a literal Satan cosplayer, or talk to one woman. That's why they call it the Incel River Man. Because some people don't choose the last one. Lake of Rot, bada boom, time for another remember boss. Astel gives us some really good patterns. When their stance breaks, we combo up the face, then survive the meteors, and poke. That's how you kill a little space bug. Carrie a manor, I hardly know her. And Loretta dies too fast to talk about, so let's just move on to the rest of the Ronnie quest. Talk to Ronnie, get the dagger from the night's sacred ground, get the statue from her, give that to the guy in the woods for the odd mushroom, turn it into the odd potion, get the broken Goron sword, and oh god, I'm so bored, let's do something else. Spirit Collar Cave will let us fight the Godskins again, that's how you know a side quest is too long. I'd rather fight the Godskin duo. The shield ends up being pretty useful for the rollout, that's pretty nice. We're here for the Godskin Swaddling Cloth to heal our combo attacks, and then we fight Rykard. Not gonna dwell on this too long, we died twice, but I'm also gonna complain about one more thing. Why does the same button you use to lock on also turn the camera 180 degrees if you're too close to Rykard? And why does it not lock on when you're too close? Shouldn't it be easier to lock on a big snake that's right next to you? Gets easier in the second part of the second phase when the snake is trying to bite you because it pushes the body into you so you can actually hit him. It's kind of sad. Rykard was the leader of the movement that inspired Patches. So committed to it, he'd let himself be devoured by a massive serpent, unsure if he would even survive. It's the kind of sacrifice someone really has to respect, and I will honor his... What a tick. That means... Lady Tanith is... Single again! Oh, behave! <laughs> okay, back to the annoying side quest, zooming through Lernia to get to the study hall. I wish I could just skip the study hall. That's what I did in high school. And I got in trouble. Like, why? It's literally nothing. The class. Curse Mark of Death, Hug Fia, any percent speed run, and it's Fortis Axe time. I can't get in to hit the head, and it sucks, because they just won't stop wiggling. First try, we die. Then, trying again, it still takes like 40 seconds between each hit. We win, but I hate it. Okay, one remembrance left, just run through LFL, get the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, and we can fight Melania. We have over 20 rune arcs, I'm sure this is gonna go fine. To this day, I hate bald boys. I can't stand bald boys. 
First attempt, we see how things are gonna go. Raya is good. The magma is good at chunky chunking Melania up and stealing her focus. The only issue is that Raya isn't very good at fighting Melania for a long time. And when she's dead, we don't last much longer with Melania's full attention. We still haven't done the Weeping Peninsula field trip for a better physics flask, so let's do that. Wow, so many sacred tears. Is this what Tears of the Kingdom is like? I is it? That's a serious question. I don't know. I didn't really like Breath of the Wild, so I didn't pick up Totka either. Back at it, Impaling Thrust is great at putting stance pressure on Mal, but it forces us to be close to her, which is not the best place to be. Avoiding the Ducky Dance is easier when you're a few character lengths away. If she shoots up into the air right next to you, it's much rougher. To clarify, I know how to dodge it, but dodging it consistently is hard. The timing's really tight, and the punishment is death. At risk of sounding like I'm complimenting Placidious Axe, the Omega Laser only happens once per fight. The Lightning Nuke happens and then you have a second to chill. Melania doesn't give you any time to chill, and since it's a multi-hit combo instead of a single blast like Plassey's attack, the Ritual Shield Talisman can't even protect you. Malcolm Ducky Dance five to six times in a fight. If I fuck up one of those, I'm toast. Giving the advice, learn to dodge the ducky dance, is just as good as the advice, just don't get hit and hit the boss more. Flawless. Sometimes I'm fast enough to quit out and save a rune art. Sometimes I'm not. But hey, remember when I said I could swap Ashes of War? Or rather, chat said I could? Let's go do that. If you don't like that, come hang out on Twitch, then you can vote in the polls when I'm indecisive. For that, it's the Knight's Cavalry in Lernia. It's scaled for Lernia, and the entire lore of the spear is that it is good against mounted enemies. So, yeah, pretty free. It drops the Ice Spear and Ash of War I've called Stupid Busted, however, I think I realize why it isn't. It is slow. But to compensate for its speed, it shoots a beam of ice pretty far away. Not super far away, and there's no tracking. But, 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 the stance pressure is good, the raw damage is good, and the frostbite is very nice. Raya's fire whip also resets the frostbite so we can pop it much faster. Sometimes the frostbite knocks her out of the ducky dance. That's very nice. It's good enough to get us into phase two more consistently. But if Raya dies in phase two, or before phase two, which is also pretty common, we don't have enough time to get the ice spears off, and we don't have the damage to kill her with regular spear attacks. Oh, also, yeah, Melania is just a huge DPS test. We're not passing. Last run we did, we were level 74 with the Dragon Halberd. Second try, we won. Just some spins and pokes that did enough damage to kill her. Now, we're level 140, hitting the hard caps of strength and dex with a quality weapon, and it's not even close to being as good. I ran out of time. We used our last rune arc, so this stream had to end. We'll probably get it on the first try coming back, though. Right? Honestly, it doesn't go well, but it's good practice, and we can start this run with a quick frostbite while Raya makes floor lava. Mal is good at playing the floor as lava because she threads through all of the goddamn lava. Fine, we get a crit after the frostbite, but before Raya can reset it, meaning that we get the extra damage off as well. And a charged R2 as she stands up. It's safe and does a lot of oomph. I dodge like half of the ducky dance. We're still almost dead though. And then just stay back and keep blasting. I am too far away after another break to get the crit. She's really, really close to phase two. Jump attack for more pressure, a little poke, and we're in there. For the onion flower, we space it just right to get the spears in without taking damage or getting robbed. Swag jump over the slash for a jumping heavy and Raya is still alive and doing great. Ice Spear breaks her down, we get a back shot, and she goes for Attack of the Clones. The clones aren't the problem. Hey, Court, can you zoom in on Raya there? Yeah, uh... Are you trying to get yourself killed? So we're alone, and one more problem. Why do half of Melania's phase two attacks lead with her jumping up into the air? It makes it so hard to figure out if she's going for clones, onion, dive, uppercut, ducky dance. I do get the frostbite as she's coming in for the flurry. That's another awesome thing about the frostbite on a ranged attack. It can proc to just stop her from moving sometimes. Finally, onion two. We space it right, but have to chug some blue. Dive attack, we punish. The stance pressure from the spears breaks her down for another crit. Frostbite as she stands up, and then we just run away, and she goes for the uppercut, which is a terrible move, and it's the first time I've seen her use it in two hours. It really do just be a lottery sometimes. We win at nine hours and 38 minutes with 39 dead bosses and 50 deaths. Land just behind Edelgard in C tier, which is fitting. That's a great shield build that didn't have to fight Melania. Overall, the spear is fine, but it falls off towards the end. The shield is situationally good. Might help you get to a boss, but in a fight against a boss, you're probably better off taking it off and enjoying better stamina recovery. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join my Patreon if you want to give us money. It's where we get to keep most of it. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next video.